pastor. Um, so I would probably like music. So, okay. Anybody else with anything before I start? No? Okay. So hi, everybody. Um, some of you I know know me. Some of you have had a chance to meet me. Some of you don't know me at all. My name is John Flynn. Um, I'm a photographer based in Ohio. Um, I'm from Dayton area is where I shoot at. I'm originally from Florida, from Pensacola. Um, I've lived in Ohio most of my life. My dad was military, so we moved around a lot. Um, I work with a lot of beginning models um, for agencies. Agencies send their girls to me a lot of times when they need to start building up a portfolio um, because they know that what I'll shoot is clean and basic, and that's what they need to start out with for most of their portfolio stuff. All the big artistic stuff with all the crazy props, wild background, giant makeup projects, huge hair, all that other stuff, that's fine. That's not what you're going to have in your basic starting portfolio. Um, you are basically a blank canvas for anyone as a model. Um, that is for commercial shoots. Personal shoots are a whole other matter altogether. But if you're shooting for a company, you're a brand representative, or you're a hired in model, something along those lines, then you are there to be a walking, talking, standing, breathing clothes hanger. <laughs> so, now, that being said, it's also extremely important that you allow your own version of your personality and everything else to come through. So, um, you're not just there meant to be a mannequin. If you were there, you'd use a mannequin. Um, they need a body and they need somebody to move around that personality. So, with that being said, um, at the beginning, step one, remove the hair elastic from your wrist. 90% of you right now, if you're a cheerleader, a dancer, model, anything else, will have a black hair elastic around your right wrist. So, anytime, anytime you walk into a photo shoot and you're getting ready to work with this, whether it's personal or whether it's for commercial, the first thing you do is take that hair elastic off your wrist because I know you've got one on. Um, that is universal. I mean, that's been, I've been at this professionally. I picked up my first camera when I was in fourth grade and never put it down, but professionally I've been doing this for about seven years as a business. So I shot long before that. But over the last seven years, that's one thing that's been very consistent, is that hair elastic. So when you go in, pay attention to that. Um, it's not unusual uh, for models, even really experienced models, to have kind of a warm up period when you come into a shoot. Um, when you come in, you'll be cold. I mean, you'll be coming in from whatever happened that morning, from waking up, from getting ready, from being the night before, from being at an event, um, holidays, whatever. So when you first come in, it's not unusual for you to feel just kind of disoriented. Um, you're, you're maybe working with someone you've never worked with before. You may have hair and makeup people poking and prodding at you that you don't know. You may have stylists, you may have whatever, brand representatives from the company. Um, you may have designers poking and prodding at you, hanging things off of you. It could be a little disorienting. So then when you step up in front of a photographer, you're in a new place where you've been poked and prodded at by a bunch of people you don't know and you're staying in front of someone you've probably not worked with before. So no one expects you to come in and turn it on like a switch. Even the pros, the higher end pros, the ones that come out of Chicago and New York, they may only take five or six shots to get comfortable, uh, whereas a beginner may take 15, but everybody has sort of a little adjustment period. You've got to get used to working with a photographer, you've got to get used to how a photographer gives directions or doesn't give directions. Um, so it just, it's gonna take everybody a little bit of adjustment time. So don't worry if you feel awkward, disoriented, or whatever when you stand up, you come up in front of the photographer and you're like, Okay, here I am. What do I do now? So don't worry, that's not that's not uncommon. Um, some photographers give a ton of direction. Some give you absolutely none at all. They just say do something. Others will be somewhere in between. They'll give you a little bit of direction. With the girls or men that I've worked with before, um, if I've worked with someone before um, and I already know their level. Um, what they can do on their own. Generally, I'll let them lay down the guidelines. I make adjustments for angles. I make adjustments for what is going to make the shot and the brand look the best. So if somebody comes up in front of me and gives me something, 
I either turned a little bit too far to the side, I can't see the brand, I can't see the brand, maybe the, the brand is on this hip. Then I'll say, great pose, do it facing in the direction. So then they'll adjust. And then when I get to the position, I'll say lean back a little bit, arch your lower back, shoulders up, back and down, chin up, that sort of thing. But I'm not gonna position every inch of someone's body. Um, as the model or the brand rep, you're gonna have your own little personality that you're gonna put into it. So I can tell you if you're going to be serious, you're not serious, I can crack jokes with you. Um, but we all have kind of a, a part we're playing for the shoot. The brands are all different, so you're shooting for trend, cheer life, that sort of thing today. Um, that brand has a particular feel that it wants. It could want, for, for today, it could want just brutal fierceness to knock the walls down, or it could want the most ridiculous, huge laughs and smiles and jumping in the air and playing butterflies. You have no idea until you're given that information to the photographer or the brand rep. Um, some brands, their feel or their mood will be universal. Uh, if you look at Nike, for example, Nike is very rarely ever cracking jokes. They're usually really serious. They're usually really intense. Old Spice, usually cracking jokes. <laughs> they do a lot of funny things, guys riding backwards on horses, all sorts of hilarious things. That is their brand, that is their thing. They know that that's what you expect from them and that's what they want to be associated with. Nike wants to be associated with that really gritty, dark, hard competitive edge. Old Spice wants to be brought in to be laughing, fun, you want this because it's hilarious and it's a lot of fun to play with. So, as far as for trend, cheer life, what sort of mood would you like your brand to be associated with either today or all time? Yeah, and I think we, we've talked about that a lot. I know we've done a lot of series. And yesterday we focused with Stephanie on lots of smiles because a lot of our kids don't do that. And we are getting a lot of the same pictures with the same fierce look, which we love. Um, but which is all, also very identifiable in cheer, but not in regular athletics, I guess, except for um, Youth athletics, especially. So we get a lot of feedback from our customers that, why are the kids smiling? Why aren't they looking at and I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about like the natural looking like fun and everything there. Reebok, Converse, those guys, they're different from me. Yeah. They so, have more of an open family feel or more fun. So I think that Sirius has a space for us. I um, would focused on smiling yesterday because that's not something we get done. So today, cheerful, fun. I don't mind if you guys are. We can be serious too. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, but so I don't mind if you're talking offside to somebody, making a joke with somebody right up to the point where you shoot. Um, somebody gets you laughing, be aware. I'm going to shoot you while you're laughing. If you're making faces at someone behind me, I'm going to shoot you while you're making faces. So whatever you put in front of me, I'm probably going to add on film that may or may not be used against you at a future time. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the most important and one of the most common things you're ever going to hear from anyone who's ever worked with a model or taught a model is learn your angles. That is the phrase that you're always going to hear. You're going to hear from other professional models. When a new model says, what advice do you have for me as a beginning model on how to improve my posing? They're going to tell you, learn your angles. What that means is everyone looks best in a different way. Um, all your body types, even models who generally are, a lot of them can be cookie cutter, even them, uh, pros that certain agencies take in for a certain look, are going to have minor differences between them. The way their profile looks, the length of their neck, their collarbones, things like that, they're all going to be a little different. So what works for one person may not work for another. Um, for example, um, in the cheer world, your, your bases, your back spots, and everything else, you guys are like strong, powerful, you can like pick up your flyer and throw them across the gym. Um, flyers tend to be really tiny, just as a general rule, they just tend to be really low. So you're posing, you each have things that work for you, um, that will be strengths based on your body type and based on your position. So you'll have to kind of learn to work with that. And you can work with that in a mirror, um, that's usually the best way. 
Um, a lot of uh, a lot of what our people will do is study what's been done before you. So you look at advertising and magazines. But since you're doing athletic wear, you're going to look at Reebok, Nike, Converse, all the all those brands that you see in the magazines. Um, <clears throat> a lot of their advertising. Look at the way that people are standing in their ads. Look at the way, look at the angles they're choosing to, to produce. Try to mimic those. Does it look good on you? No? Well then, how can you modify it to look good on you? For me, as an example, I'm not a small man. Standing sideways, I look like I'm in, like going into labor at any minute. So standing sideways is really not the best thing for me if I were going to stand in front of a pose, someone to pose. But, say for example, I have girlish hips, like big hips, for whatever reason I have uh, that shape. So I, I don't necessarily want my big hips if I'm facing straight forward. So my big hips are showing bigger if I'm facing forward, but my stomach looks smaller when I'm facing forward. So you have to learn to combine the two things. So you might bring your body sideways for your lower body, and then rotate for your upper body. That gives you a little bit of the both. That makes your hips smaller, makes your upper body more narrow. If you tend to be, most of you, I think, is everybody here, we have all ladies today, and not and not even men today? Yeah. Okay. So, ladies obviously have shapes. Um, everybody has their own different shape. Some of you may tend to be a little bit more busty. Some of you tend to maybe not at all. It just depends on, obviously, a lot of things, age, athleticism, all that kind of stuff. That can be either a pro or a con for you, and you may feel certain ways about that as far as how you want to pose. If you feel like, I have no shape at all, I, I can't make your clothes look good because I have no shape. It's not true. You can make clothes look good. You can make yourself look like you have more curves than you do if you don't have it. And again, that goes from learning your angles. So say, say that I'm a tiny little flyer and I don't have a whole lot of curves. Not yet anymore. So if I'm looking at, I want to make the Cheer Life logo pronounced. I don't necessarily have a physical thing on me that's going to make that happen on its own. So I need to make adjustments to my body to make it stand out more. So what I have to always tell everybody for that is, shoulders will do the job for you, okay? So it's always up, back, and down. If you think about that, that will correct your posture for your shoulders. Now, the important thing is not to, let, not to look stiff. So you can still give different poses and still do up, back, and down. So you don't have to be standing straight. But if you do it yourself, just while you're sitting there, up, back, and down, you'll feel the difference that it makes. It makes you push your chest out. It makes you alter your shoulders. It makes you stand up a little bit straighter. It makes you arch your lower back a little bit. All of those things are really good to give what you want a little bit of shape. Um, another thing with learning your angles. Say, for example, you have, or you personally feel, I have the biggest forehead in the world. I don't like my forehead, it's too big. Bring your chin up, your forehead's gone, no problem. So it's all about learning your angles. So if you put your chin down, your forehead's right out in front of the center. Put your chin up, your forehead angles back, it gets smaller. It's all a matter of perspective and angles. Um, another example, maybe you don't have the longest, most elegant neck in the world, but you want to make your, le your neck look longer, again. Chin up. Don't keep bringing your chin down to cut your, cut your neck off. Keep your chin up. It's going to feel unusual because you're going to be carrying your chin higher than you normally would day to day. So say my day to day position is this. This is a squared off position for me. This is where I talk at. That would be like me talking to you like this. It looks a little weird, but on camera it looks really good. But it feels really awkward for me to talk to you with my chin in the air like this. <laughs> so you're, you won't always feel the most comfortable with your poses, but the photographer is working with your angles to make sure the shots look good. So you may feel a little weird, that's just how it, that's how it works. A lot of times you go to see the result right away and you'll say, oh, well that looks okay. Um, okay, so wearing athletic wear, you have a disadvantage that models who wear evening gowns, party dresses, etc., have over you. You're not wearing heels. None of you will be wearing heels. You're not going to be wearing heels with your spandex shorts or your yoga pants or anything else. It's just not going to happen. It looks silly. So unless you're a Kardashian, you can probably get away with it. But for everybody else, you're probably not going to do that. So I always call upon 
something that one of my Irish dancers told me once about her great grandmother, who was from Ireland, um, who was also an Irish dancer, and she put bottle caps in her daughter's and her granddaughter's shoes on the heels to keep them on the balls of their feet. So they wouldn't want to step back on the bottle caps. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that. That's pretty ruthless. That's, that's pretty hardcore. That's something that great grandma's day would do. These days we wouldn't necessarily do. But if you think about it, if you had bottle caps face up on the heels of your shoes, you probably wouldn't want to be putting the weight on the, on the heels of your shoes. You probably want to keep up on your toes all the time. That's why Irish dancers look like they have big fists in their calves is because they're never not on their toes. They're always on their toes at all times. Even when they walk around, if you watch them, they're on their toes most of the time. So if you, work, if you want to make your legs look longer, if you want to make them look stronger, all you guys have ridiculous muscles. Almost all of you do. Somewhere on your body, whether it's your legs, your arms, your abs, whatever it is, you guys train, you spend a lot of time in the gym, and it's crazy because you look superhuman most of the time to me. So, but you want to show those things off because you want the people looking at this brand to go, that person is fit, they're obviously really good at what they do, I want to look like them when I put this on. So you want to show some of that musculature, you want to show a little bit of that. So that includes your legs. So when you're standing, whenever you're in front of the camera, you want to be just a little bit on the balls of your feet. And you may go completely up on the balls of your feet for some shots or you may give one up and really flex the front calf. But pretty much most of the time, you're gonna be on just the balls of your feet, just a little bit, with that weight shifted a little bit forward. That'll really help with your legs, that'll help with your upper body, and it'll help with your posture too. It'll keep you from sticking your booty out. It'll keep it in, because when you stand up on here, you're using that for balance as well. So, just suggestions. Um, All right, most popular question, what do I do with my hands? So this is universal. This isn't just an athletic wear thing. Um, the downside is the athletic wear models have it the hardest when it comes to what do I do with my hands. You are a lot more limited than what a lot of the other model models are because they have purses, sunglasses, pockets, belt loops, jewelry. Okay, <laughs> so there you go. So they have things that a lot of you guys will not have with what you're wearing. So they have the advantage of being able to do that. So your hand positions may be a little bit less varied, but that doesn't mean that you always have to have your hands on your hips. That's generally a go-to for a lot of athletic work models is, okay, hands on my hips. That's not necessarily what you always want to do. If you're gonna work with your hands, the important thing is to make them look relaxed. Even though you're strong, even though you're powerful, you want your hands to look like your ballet dancing. You just want them to look soft. You don't want to give me karate chops. You don't want to give me the claw of death. You don't want to give me any of that. You just want your hands to relax. You also don't want symmetry. So you don't want your hands bundled up like this when I have them down here, it looks awkward. You want your hands relaxed and uneven. So you want this when you have your hands down, because it looks more relaxed. Watch your shoulders as well, because you don't want to hold your shoulder up and have that relaxed hand, because obviously it looks silly. <laughs> so you just want to be able to relax. So our will tell you to relax. They'll help you out with that. But your hands just need to be loose and natural. And don't fight them. If I tell you to lean back, I'm not telling you to try to keep your hand up. I want your hand to drop where it wants to drop. Um, you can work with your hands a lot by helping to sell the product. Um, so if you're selling, say you have a video, who has a hoodie? Is anybody wearing a hoodie right it's, now? It's funny you asked that because I was going to bring it up. Okay. And I actually want, I'm going to call this a stand up too. Do I see it here? Do you have pockets on here? So there's many times, and take your hands out of your pockets for a second. I'll get pictures when I'm not there of someone with a hoodie, and like, I only just take it all the way down. And I'll get pictures with someone with a hoodie like this. And moms will ask me, why are you not posting my daughter's pictures? Well, because we don't want to sell a hoodie, sorry, not the hoodie, that looks like this. We want the hoodie pulled up. 
You might want your hands on your hips to hold that hoodie out. You want it to look like it fits. You, you can put a hand in a pocket. <laughs> Put your thumb out, yep, just like that. And so it's all about with this part positioning it because we don't want it to just look like, oh, you just put your hoodie on and get out of bed. Um, so, th so that's one good point now with Lila. You may want to, she, she's a, a good example because she just put her hands in her pockets. That's an easy picture to post. If they look like they just get out of bed, like their apparel isn't positioned well, we don't, we won't, I won't post those pictures. I'm sure. So both of you guys stay standing, I'm going to use you too. <clears throat> so, with your hoodie, you have options. You have more options than she does, actually. Even though she has pockets, you have pockets, but you also have strings, and you have a hood. So you have things that she doesn't have. Now, with those strings, you can have fun with them. Take your hands out of your pockets, throw your hair to the back, because then no longer covers the cheer life logo at all. Pull your strings out. Give you a huge grin. Lean to the side. <laughs> With like, you're just like playing with the strings on your head. It's exactly that. So you, then you've got the grin, you're playing with the strings. Then what you're using is you're using negative space because you're, you're actually using your elbows and everything else. You're actually pointing to the logo. You just don't realize it. So what you're doing right now is pointing to the logo, I love my cheer life. And you're using your hands to do that. So you're selling me your product. Okay? Now with your hands in your pockets, there are two ways, well, there are three ways to do it. Two right ways, one wrong way. One wrong way, your hands are entirely in your pockets. I don't see any thumbs, I don't see any fingers, I see nothing but stubs. <laughs> so, I don't want to see stubs. I want to see a thumb, or I want to see thumb tucked in, and I want to see whole hands. Okay? That's, that's how you work with your pockets. With her, if she has hands pockets, it's easier to show with her. So you can give me hands like that, so show everybody, turn towards them. Or you can put just your fingers in and keep your thumbs out. So those are the two ways that you do pockets. There is no other way to do pockets. Okay? <laughs> now, you can take your left hand out of your pocket, relax it, make sure your hand is nice and loose. It's just, you're just chilling, hanging out, talking to your friends. That's all you're doing. You're not posing, you're not like, you know, you're, you're not that, you're not the mannequin. We want your personality. So we want you, we want you to lean into it a little bit. We want you to give me a little streak from it, all right? Give me just a little bit of attitude. You still have a big smile with that. <laughs> you can still have a big smile, exactly. See, if, no, right now, if you were standing in front of me cracking up, I'd be shooting. And those are the ones that she'd probably post. So, because it's a big natural smile. So, you can lean into it. You don't need to be, wait, even on your feet. You want to be uneven as much as possible. I don't want both hands like this necessarily. I want a hand down, or I want a hand up and down. If you're standing with your hands to the side, <coughs> so you're giving me this, so I tell you to bring your foot up a little bit, I tell you to lean back, your hands are even, I don't necessarily want that. I want you to give me an elbow bend. It gives me a little bit of an accent, gives me a little bit of negative space, it helps to lead the lines up to whatever you're wearing. It also helps lead the lines down because then you're pointing with this hand at your pants, your shorts, your brand label, whatever, you can sit down. <laughs> Thank you ladies for being that most. Um, so with your hoodies, play with your strings, play with your hood, don't cover your face with it, but bring it up and play with it, but get your hands on it. Not even hands, uneven hands, always uneven. If you're reaching up to play with the lapels on something, a jacket that's open with a zipper in the front, your hands are never even, your hands are always uneven, okay? You put them even, it cuts you off. You put them uneven, it opens it up and adds interest. All right? Okay, so now keep in mind this is basics. Okay, I'm just covering basics. This is relatively quick. There's obviously a lot more to it when you start working with other products. If you're working with watches, if you're working with jewelry, if Jen starts adding bracelets, things like that, you've done some stuff, haven't you? Have you done Not anything like that? Bracelets, no. Okay. Okay, so say Jen does a cheer life bracelet, okay? Your job is to sell the bracelet. So you want to touch it. If, if, I'm a, if I'm a guy and I'm selling a watch, I'm touching my watch. I'm looking at my watch, I'm adjusting my watch. All right, if I'm selling a bracelet, I'm touching my bracelet, I'm crossing my, I'm crossing my hands like this. I don't want to block my face like that, that's bad advice, but bring your hands up. 
show your bracelet off, show your watch off, show your accessory off. Okay? If you have hats, you can do the same thing. You pull in your hats, bring your hats down, turn them sideways. So work with the product. Your job is to sell the product. You do that by making everybody want to be you. So we're doing fun on time. Um, one last thing. So I'll give you some ideas. So I tell anybody who gets completely stuck. So you get up here, we've been shooting for 15 minutes or something, all right? Say we have 20 minutes a lot of time for your particular shoot, or we have 10 minutes a lot of time and we're five minutes in, okay? And you stand there and you go, I don't know what to do next. There's always something to do next, okay? So when you get to that point and you say, Okay, I've given you the five poses that I know how to do and that I know how to look good in. At that point, I tell you to work in a circle. And if you worked with me before, you may have heard it. I know, I don't think any of you have been in my studio. I don't think anybody here has been in my studio. Some of the other True Life ladies have been in the studio with me before. So they've heard of work in a circle when they've gotten stuck before. What that means is any pose you can do for me facing forward, you can also do it for me facing sideways, backwards, and at three quarters of an angle, all right? So if you are standing in front of me with pants pockets on, you're standing here like this, you're facing toward me. You're just hanging out, all right? Guess what? It works well over here too. It also works from here. Now, this depends on your brand, of course. If you've got pants, it's fine, because then you're showing the back. So you're showing the back of your shirts if you have racer back or whatever, it depends on the, the, the style of the shirt. Showing the back of the shirt. So you don't always need to be facing forward. You don't always need to be facing sideways. You do, in fact, sometimes want to be facing backwards. Generally, you'll do a profile when you're doing this. You bring your face sideways so we can still see that you're human. Or you'll actually look completely back over your shoulder. So work in a circle. So I've got my pose this way. I've got my pose this way. I've got my pose this way. And you can switch hands. And then I'm working this way. Then I'm back in front. Now I've worked in a circle and I've worked both hands. I've just given the photographer five new poses I didn't even know I had. So and that can be done with anything. You can cross your arms. Now, if you have a brand logo you're trying to put here, then go back to your pockets if you've got pockets. If you don't have pockets, cross your arms lower than the logo. Don't cross your hands across the logo, okay? Or work with, work with your hands up. And that can be a little bit tricky, working with your hands up, because it can look a little awkward if you're not quite sure what you're doing. If any of you want to try it today, I'll help walk you through it to make sure that it doesn't look awkward. So you guys are used to routines. You're used to first we do this, then we do this, then I move over here, then there's a tumbling pass, then I do this, then I do this. You can do the same thing as a model. You can do the same thing as a brand rep. <coughs> Build yourself a routine. You know you're going to come in. You know you're going to come in for a photo shoot. You know you're going to be in the studio for the photo shoot. There's only so much somebody's going to do in a studio. It's all going to come down to you're standing in front of lights, and the amount of space you're working with is fairly limited. Okay, so you can have a routine that you decide you want to do. First, I'm going to open up with this pose, and then I'm going to go straight into this pose, and then I'm going to go straight into this pose. So work out a dozen poses. Those are your 12 go-to poses. Go change clothes. Guess what? Come back out. Do the same 12 poses again. Your different outfit. It's different. You, you, your picture may show up one week in, in the first outfit. It may not show up again for six more weeks in the other outfit. Nobody's going to remember the first one, not in your exact pose. So work out a routine. So that helps you to have a routine, have a routine. <coughs> Something you're going to hear, um, I know you hear in Shear is engage your core. I know that's something that's pretty common. Um, gangsters hear all the time too. You're pretty much engaging every part of your body when you're working on model work from head to toe. To at some level, you're not necessarily engaging your core like you would if you were in the gym, but you are thinking about every part of your body when you're in front of someone. Start your toes and work your way up, is usually what I recommend for everybody. All right, so my feet are going to do this. So what are my knees doing? Well, I want to bend my knees in a little bit. Okay, good. That's what my knees are doing. What are my hips doing? Well, I want to bend them out a little bit. What's my upper body doing? Well, I want my shoulders up, back, and down so that my posture looks good. 
What am I doing? I'm leaning back a little bit with my back. What am I doing with my arms? I'm letting them relax. Or I'm hooking a pocket, or I'm bringing them up at an angle. So you better think about, and then you get up here, thinking about your neck. I've got to have my chin up so my forehead doesn't look big. Or I've got to have my chin up so that my neck looks longer. Or I'm going to give a fun little angle because I'm going to be cracking a big smile. So you're working yourself from your toes to the top of your head. So it's actually very planned. And the more you practice it, just like cheer, chess club, band, piano, any other instrument, the more you practice, the better you get. But the only time you're practicing is when you come to the performance, and that's obviously a problem. So you want to spend some time practicing at home in front of a mirror. Learn your angles. <coughs> we talked about reflecting the correct mood. We talked about selling the product. So typical elements in Large commercial shoots is a big team of people. The model and the photographer are only two pieces of that total team. You have a designer or a brand rep. So it could be the owners, or in the future it could be Fat and Jen don't have time to be here, they'll have someone designated around the shoot. So they'll have an assistant, someone they'll send out. That's the brand rep. That's the person who makes sure that the mood is being shown for the brand, and that everything's being gotten that needs to be gotten. So the designer or brand rep, you have the models, usually plural, because there are usually going to be more than one model at an event. Um, you're going to have a photographer. The photographer will sometimes have an assistant, maybe even two or three assistants. Um, I usually work with one assistant in my studio when I work with one, and it's always female, because I like to have a female assistant who I can say, hey, go up and brush back your hair. Hey, go up and adjust that strap on her shoulder. You know, that kind of thing. Because I'm not going to go up there and do it. I will never put my hands on anybody. The extent of me putting my hands on anybody will be knocking a hair out of the way, and I usually don't even do that. So I will tell you, push your hair out of the way. Um, you usually have hair, you usually have somebody for makeup. Sometimes it could be the same person. In larger shoots, it's usually more than one person. Um, you usually have a wardrobe master. Now the wardrobe master, if it's a shoot where you're not bringing the clothes in or you're not being given the clothes to take home, you're putting on samples, that sort of thing. The wardrobe master arranges their racks in order, based on what model's gonna wear them, what sizes they're in, and what the order of the shoot's gonna go into. So they'll have three or four racks laid out specifically in order with the name, names of the model on the hangers in the order that they're going to be wearing them. The wardrobe master will work with the stylist. The stylist has your bracelets, your hair ties, anything else, your shoes, they have all the accessories that is not the clothing part. So all of those people work together for some of these bigger sheets that you see. And it may come to the point where eventually Trend will need something like that as well. But right now with you guys just being brand reps and everything, you get the benefit of you have the clothes. So they don't have to worry about all that extra stuff. So that's a huge plus. Um, as far as model work goes, have anybody, has anybody in here, well, I know a couple of you do some modeling work outside of to your life, you maybe have an agency, that sort of thing that you work with already. Um, any of you who are not currently with an agency, have you thought about doing any other model work outside of to your life or anything? Have any of you thought about it, considered it? Some, yes? Okay. Um, so when you're looking at model work, you're generally looking at runway, print, and video. Those are your three big types, okay? Um, print has a huge subcategory under it, runway doesn't, and video has a huge subcategory under it. So runway is runway. So that's, it, it is what it is. It's runway, every designer will want a different feel for their walk, just like we were talking about feel for a brand. But generally, they want stone face killer. That's what they want on their runway. Mm. They don't want expression, they don't want smiles, they don't want any of that stuff. The only exception being some of the younger kids, they may want big smiles on them. Um, but even then, a lot, of, a lot of times, the younger kids, blank face. It's the total blank face in their community. It's all about the walk. It's 
It's all about the way the clothes move on you and the way that you think the clothes move. So it's different than print work working in a photo studio. To run away, everything is live. You only get one shot at doing it. You fall down, you fall down, you get back up, keep going. It's all about the way that you work the clothes and make the move. So when you're working with your pockets, when you're working with your hoodies, when you're working with things like that, if you're on the runway, you've got to be doing that while you're on the runway. You get one chance to show it off. You come down to the end of the runway, you hit it, you hit your pose, you hit your other pose, turn around, you walk back up the runway. It's all about having a particular walk. If you walk not like a model and like an athlete, then you're probably doing this. Because you're used to having a nice solid beast to stand on. You've got strong legs, strong everything else. You just walk like everybody else does. Models walk like this. It's one foot in front of the other 90% of the time. Especially if you're in heels. Athletic wear, you want to have heels on. So, probably it's different. With print, you're not always just working your full body. You're not always just working your upper body. You may be working just your neck. You may be working just your eyes, just your teeth, just your hands. I shot a professional hand model. They do exist. It's not just a TV <laughs> joke from Seinfeld. It actually exists. So if you've ever seen the TV shows where they do the baby diaper commercials where they pour the blue liquid into the diapers and ours holds more blue liquid than theirs, there's a professional hand model standing there holding those things. That is a professional union hand model. So their hands have to be certain characteristics. That's a mom hand. That's an athlete hand. That's a supermodel hand, you know, whatever. So your hands have to be a certain way. When you're working with a hand model, they have weird things that they do. It's true. So they walk around like surgeons. During, during the shoot, they're keeping the blood out of their hands. They're keeping their veins down. They don't want them to be blue. They don't want them to be bulging. They want to keep the blood out of their hands. So they want to keep them constant color. And they don't want to have veins showing. So they'll walk around like this the whole time. They'll, they'll stand there and talk to you just like this. <laughs> they like just perfectly normal. So that's, that's a hand model. Now you'll have the equivalent of, you know, I use Nike as another example, but they're gigantic. So you can't help but use them sometimes. Shoe, they do shoes, for example. You don't necessarily always see somebody's whole body in a shoe advertisement. You see the knee down. Sometimes you just see the ankle. That's a professional leg model. That's a professional foot model. So all they do, the rest of their body may be, look like me, but they may have the best calf and foot in the whole world. And that's what they're getting paid for. So when you're dealing with print modeling, you're not necessarily dealing with the whole body. You can deal with segments, you can specialize. Dentists need people with good smiles for their advertising. Um, people that work with glasses, op optometrists, they need people to have great eyes, usually big eyes. Um, you know, in any other circumstance, someone's eyes could look like giant alien eyes to, to a lot of us, but for someone who is a model, who's an eye specialist model, they're making bank on those eyes, <laughs> all right? So they're, they're in every Louis Vuitton, you know, any, any sort of, they're in any app for anybody that does designer glasses. That's, that's, the, that's their eyes. When you're doing video, it's a whole other ballgame. I don't deal with video. I do photo, I do stills. When you're doing video, um, it's a whole combination of things because when they, when they do video, it's similar to print because there will be certain genres. Um, but in video, they're generally, it's going to be the whole body whenever they're doing the shoot. They'll crop in on what they want. With photographers, they'll generally focus on what they want and try to fill the frame with that. So it's a, it's a different way to shoot. All right, so my plan is just kind of auto but in now. Isn't that way they're sending you sending out for lunch? So I'll still be here for questions at lunch. I mean, okay. I mean later. Later, yeah. Um, but I, won't have to, but I won't have a second talking to you. Yes. So, yeah. so, um, so we just have a little bit more because we're almost done. Because uh, I want to be done before 11. Because I want to take less than an hour for this. Um, so building a portfolio. Now this is important. So we're going to spend a couple minutes on this. Um, building a portfolio. 
doesn't need to be anything crazy fancy. And a model's portfolio a lot of times will be similar to a photographer's portfolio in some ways. That is, while you're using the older portfolio as a beginner, is usually about the same thing. This is the size I use for my print por por portfolios. I do very little in print as far as portfolio work. Usually anything that I put up is online on my website, that sort of thing. This is 11 by 14. This is the size a photographer uses. <coughs> Model sizes, typically 8 by 10. Now when I say 8 by 10, I mean 8 by 10. I don't mean you're putting 5 by 9s in 8 by 10 sleeves, because that's what you have. I don't mean you're dropping 4 by 6s in there, because that's what you have. I mean every print that goes into your portfolio is 8 by 10, if that's what size your portfolio is. It's not acceptable to put smaller prints inside at all. You can run eight and a half by eleven if you want to, since it's a standard magazine size, and you know that gives you a little bit different. Um, it can be harder to find eight and a half by eleven portfolios. Eight by ten portfolios are really easy to find. Now, this is the one that so many people recommend as a beginner portfolio. So you can get these at Michaels. A lot of people have a Michaels Crafts. If not, you can order them online. They're also available on Amazon. The brand is Itoya. It's I-T-O-Y-A. And it's just called an art portfolio. And they're available in all sorts of different sizes. These are really basic, really standard. So inside, you have a black, just a black paper, and you have sleeves. So you can put a photo on either side with the black paper in between to give you a little bit more support. Okay? So this is pretty basic. You do not have to fill the whole thing. So this will have more pages than you will probably need. This one doesn't have removable pages, but you do not need to use the whole thing. An average portfolio size is between 12 and 20 photos. That's max. If you go above 20, they're going to get to about 12, and they're just going to throw it back at because they don't want to see the rest. They've already seen what they need to see. So when you are putting together, when you're putting together a portfolio, so I forgot that was actually in there. Um, when you're putting together a portfolio, don't lead with something goofy, OK? Lead with your headshot when you're putting it together. Actually, I see the front. Lead with your headshot. Finish with your second best headshot, OK? When you sit down and read a magazine, what do you do? You start from the front always? No, you start from the back 80% of the time and flip forward, OK? So anybody running a casting call and any agents, they're human just like you. That's just something that we do. We start from the back and we go to the front a lot of times. They'll do it too. Sometimes they'll start in the middle on purpose because they know that most people will put their strongest work in the front their weakest work in the back, and fill in between with whatever else they have. You don't want to be that person. Do not put your strongest photos in the front. Do not put your weakest photos in the back. All right? You need to spread them out. So when you're laying out your photos, say you have 50 photos. Oh my gosh, I don't know which one to narrow it down to through my 12 or my 16 or whatever. Take some of this blue painter's tape, take a blank wall in your house, Print them all at four by six on the cheapest paper that you can get. Stick them all up on the wall. Look at them every day. Go through, nope, pull it off, throw it in the trash. So eventually, you'll be down to the point where you've got it down to a really hard decision, you're at 25, you need to narrow it down a little bit further. That's when you bring in somebody else. Get a second opinion, have them pull out your last five or six or whatever and throw those away. But if you look at them every day, you'll learn the ones that you love, you'll learn the ones that you don't love. So that's just that's one way of going through it. A lot of photographers use that method. Some models use that method. Models already working with an agency will just submit 50 photos to an agent and ask the agent to pick the ones they want. If you don't have an agent yet, it's harder because it's your job to make sure that you give the agent something that they want to see. When you're going to deal with an agency, you want to have a print portfolio because you need to have something to show them. It also does not hurt to have something online that they can look at. So if you have a you know, $10 a year website or something with a password on it that just has 
your portfolio, the same pictures that are in your print portfolio, that doesn't hurt. You can put it on a business card and put it right in that front flap, right on the little business card holder, put the address and the password for your little digital online gallery. Now you can also put photos in there that you do not have in your print gallery. So say you're cheer or dance and you want to put a whole bunch of cheer or dance stuff in that, in that gallery, you can do that. So that way you stick to more basic stuff in your print portfolio, but in your digital portfolio you say, here's what I can really do. So when you're laying out your portfolio, very important tip. All right, so I open this up. Front page, you've only got one page to worry about. Like I said, you're already gonna leave with your headshot. When you open it up, all of a sudden, they're looking at two pages at one time. Okay, that's fine, as long as they're both facing the same direction. This should not be vertical horizontal or horizontal vertical. You're not making someone turn their portfolio this way to look at one photo. It's perfectly fine to make them turn it this way to look at two photos, okay? So vertical with vertical, horizontal with horizontal when you're looking at what's opposite from what's next, okay? So do not make them turn it for one. They probably won't even bother. And going with the agency that you're choosing, those aren't always the pictures that are going to do the best for you on social media. No, never. So I think that that's a, that's a really big misconception is that you feel like, my daughter's 10, but she looks 14 in this picture, and she looks great, she has bright red lipstick on, and she has great makeup, and her hair is all done, and certainly I can post that picture, but in general, it's not going to be the model that she's at all. They want them to look their age or younger. Um, younger, a lot of times. They do not want uh, 11, 12 year old girls that look like they're 16 and 17. Um, they want their kids to look much younger but be mature and set. Absolutely true. If you have freckles, they want the freckles. <laughs> do not hide the freckles. <laughs> they want them. They want them bad. So do not hide them. Do not use the makeup to hide them. Those freckles are a gold mine on your face. Do not hide them, okay? Um, false lashes, don't even think about touching the false lashes when you're putting together your basic portfolio. Again, this is for your intro, for your basic starter portfolio. Once you're established, once you have an agency behind you, then other photos will sneak into your portfolio that are more advanced with crazy makeup, the, the, the hair, the, the whole nine yards, the crazy wardrobes, the $20,000 dresses, whatever. That'll creep in eventually, but it will still only be about 15% of your portfolio. All the rest of it is still your basic stuff. Um, when an agency, the last agency that sent anybody to me was out of Atlanta. They sent a model into me named Victoria, who I had worked with before when she was in Ohio. They wanted her to shoot with me again, so she flew in and she shot with me. She spent 20 minutes with me, okay, that's all. All she did, she did, they wanted a black swimwear, no makeup, hair pulled back in a ponytail, and low heels, period. <coughs> Not a speck of makeup, no foundation, no concealer. You just woke up in the morning. That's it. That's all they wanted. They wanted front, side, back, side, front, and they wanted that in headshot length, full length, and three-quarter length. That's what they wanted for her portfolio. So, did she get the job? Yeah, she got the job they were putting her in for. That's all they wanted. They didn't want anything else. They wanted to see, she's the mannequin, she's the clothes hanger. They wanted to see what, what blank slate she had to offer the hairstylists, the makeup people, and everything else who were looking for the models to approve with the art director for particular shoots. They wanted her bone structure, they wanted her clavicles. They wanted to see what her shoulder blades did when she turned around. They were looking at her entire frame. It had nothing to do with how awesome her makeup was, how amazing her hair was. That's their job to do. What they want is to put that on you and they need the right blank slate to do that with. So you'll have some pretty plain, now that's not generally something that you're gonna put into an intro portfolio. That was specifically for an agency, for a client but that's very, very common. But somewhere along those lines, basic clothing, jeans, skirts, shoes of all kinds, 
basic stuff. 